Hello and welcome everyone into a brand new Total War Warhammer 3 Legendary Campaign, this time piloting Zeech's favorite demon, the Changeling. This sassy blue boy has received quite a few changes to make the campaign a little bit less of a cakewalk for players. There is still no functional way to lose the game if you play cleverly, so we shall find out firsthand. I myself have not had a much time on either Zinch or the Changeling outside of our Grimhammer campaign storing the Demon Prince, so please feel free to bombard me with all of your sneaky tips and tricks for this faction that I should know. This campaign will be replacing Astonkia, so it's going to be going up every other day, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And for the last bit of housekeeping, this will be a cinematic campaign where all battles are going to be a replay of what I fought. I like this format quite a bit for factions that are extremely magic and ability focused, that way you get less of me desperately trying to use all of the abilities while tripping on my own words, and more time enjoying the pink and blue destruction. I like having our cinematic campaigns also be on a legendary difficulty, because there is no way to slow or pause time, that way you're going to be seeing a real-time battle exactly as I commanded it, mistakes and all, while also letting me train up my own micro during those battles themselves. And with all that out of the way, let's get into the Changeling's campaign details. And of course, customary for our intros, there's going to be quite a few jump cuts. Uh, the Changeling begins his machinations at the heart of the Empire, but perhaps only his master Zinch can foresee the next gambit. Indeed. So our starting army is going to be of Zangords, which have been downgraded a little bit to just be uh, specially marked normal gore units, so they've got lost a little bit of their stats. We've got the normal blue horrors of Zinch, which are cheap, cheerful, and great. We've got the Cockatrice, which is a fantastic flying monster. Uh, some Chaos Furies of Zinch, which are what they are. And what'll be hopefully our final cut, moving on to the Changebringers, which are a flying version of the actual normal Flamers of Zinch that have a little bit of a different attack if I read it correctly, on top of being able to fly around. They apparently drop down a little bit of a vortex, so we'll get to see that in action. There are four new units for Zinch that were added. We have the Chaos Lord of Zinch, the Exalted Hero of Zinch with his three-headed goodness, uh, we've got also, where are they at? The Zintagores of Zeech, which are a bestial cavalry with great weapons. Uh, they don't actually have a bonus versus a large, which is a little bit strange, but we'll work around it. And then we've got the Changebringers, which are those flying uh, normal, normal flamers. There they are. Good stuff. With all that, the faction effects immune to diplomatic penalties from trespassing, because no one's really going to know we're there. Establish trickster cults instead of occupying territory. We will replenish and recruit in foreign territory, and our armies are going to be hidden in regions with trickster cult buildings, which is great. We'll be sneaking all over the place. Uh, for the Changeling's Lord Effects himself, he can shapeshift in battle into other legendary lords and heroes, which as they keep adding more and more, he's going to continue to get even stronger. So we'll have to see if he can actually transform into the likes of a Satang and even the Golden Knight that's just been added. He's going to start right smack dab in the middle of the Empire and for our lore, the Changeling personifies the part of Zinch's psyche that is the meddler, the deceiver, and the trickster. He can take the form of other beings, from the tiniest of insects to the most massive of greater demons. None save for perhaps Zinch himself know the Changeling's true form, for he gets cowled and cloaked when in his own shape. Perhaps even the Changeling himself has forgotten it. So many of his pranks have caused terrible wars is of no concern to him, for he loves the discord of conflict to breed more opportunities to deceive and dismay. When the battle begins, the Changeling is wont to adopt the shape and skill of his foes, in turn pounding them to pieces with malicious enthusiasm and borrowed muscle. Let's get right to it. Ooh, before we do, we almost always forget. We're playing on Legendary Campaign Difficulty with the battle difficulty set to very hard. I am going to go ahead and set on no in-game scenarios because that's just going to damage uh, the world at large and not ourselves so much. We've got things set obviously to battle realism mode, but I'm going to have the AI stat modifier set to a neutral there where they're gaining no bumps to anything. All we are going to have to deal with is the uh, smarter AI there on very hard difficulty and you will also receive I believe it's a negative five penalty to leadership for all of your troops uh, playing on that very hard. But the enemy themselves are not going to fight any stronger than they normally would so you're not going to have Skaven slaves outclassing uh, dwarf warriors or anything goofy like that. Let's get back to the changeling and begin our campaign. As the winds of change begin to stir, faint echoes can be heard. Carried on the breeze comes mocking laughter.
With a flair for mayhem and an eye for trouble, the changeling leaves a trail of chaos in his wake. Each prank to be savored. As he weaves his tapestry of despair, watching as the mighty fall by their own hand, the trickster's schemes spare no fate. Let the games begin. We will find out quite soon. We get our first form here after our uh, initial battle. How about the Changeling thrives on sowing discord in it by enacting devious schemes across the world's theaters of war. Each theater's minor schemes set the stage for its grand scheme, a chaotic culmination of mischief unraveled against the theater's main power. The Changeling must sufficiently destabilize the world via schemes in order to perform the most audacious prank of all, the ultimate scheme. Excellent naming. Uh, complete this master stroke, or completing this master stroke, will earn the deceivers their campaign victory. Our first mission has been issued. We need to capture the following settlement to establish a trickster cult, Needling. Uh, the greatest deceptions will require you to be everywhere and nowhere all at once. Every foothold gained, whether by battle or infiltration, is a place to seed your schemes and expand the trickster cults. Uh, trickster cults coexist with their hosts, settlements, uh, via trickster cult buildings, which the deceivers can establish post-battle or via hero actions. So once we do complete the Battle of Needling, we will gain a Trickster Cultist and 75 Grimoires. Which is going to be kind of one of our main two uh, currencies besides just your normal favors. You've got favor, you've got Grimoires, which are going to be generated from the buildings and fighting battles, and we use them for changing of the ways and technologies. And then Cult Supplies are going to be used to construct Trickster Cult buildings, and these will be generated from infrastructure buildings in Trickster Cult settlements and by completing schemes. Good stuff. This is going to be kind of our main a resource kind of similar to how you have in the Chaos Dwarves, a secondary resource needed to build up all of your buildings. The Changeling. So our first target is Needling, huh? There's no armies nearby? Intriguing. So these will be all of the schemes as we complete them. The eyes will open up. That's horrifying. Got a little bit of a different technology tree here with the Changeling. You can see where most of the campaign work went to. It wouldn't be Zinch, would it? We've got every scheme begins with a seed planted in plain sight of the Changeling's victims. This will give us a little bit of a background income of supplies and grimoires and then replenish rate, which sounds fantastic. Change is progress. For our changing of the ways, we can spread corruption for grimoires. We need 125 of them, and how much corruption do we spread? Unknown. Well, that's very Zeechian. Lastly, here we've got our Theaters of War and the Schemes. So we are currently in the Empire Theater, but you can see there's one for Norsk and Kislev, Ulthuan, Nagaroth, Illustria, pretty much all of the different regions in the world. Which is so incredible. Grand Cathay, Darklands in the Mountains of Morn, Tonia and Athaloran, and the Badlands in the Southlands. We are going to do our best to complete absolutely all of these schemes here. We'll see how many we can. You only need to complete five before the ultimate scheme battle is available, but we'll do what we can to finish all of them because the more we do complete, the less reinforcements there will be in the end. And then the more reinforcements we'll have, so eventually it'll be Laborer Rebels, the Drowned, World Walkers, Tomb Kings, and Pestilence versus just the Empire, as long as we complete all of them. Ooh, this little eye follows you. Beach is horrifying. Yes, we're absolutely going to. So for this first Empire scheme here, We've got infiltrate any settlement with a trickster cult, which we should already have. But no, our first one is here in Needling. That makes sense. Destroy the Fecundites for Arcane Healing. 10% replenishment rate for all of our factions. That's awesome. And actually, not that hard to do. We could kind of circle back around to the Brass Keep quite quickly. Win 15 land battles in the Empire Theater to get Veterans of Change. Root rank for all armies, plus two, and then additional trickster cultist contacted for our technology panel. Interesting. 
Sacking Alt Door for constructing a ravaging host tier 5 would give us the steam tanks. Our own Zinchian tanks sound great. Winning 12 battles against the Dawi give us 10% ward save for all of our characters. A little bit of stone skin. And then the Sylvanian Rift raised each corruption to 75 in Drakenhof or a Trickster, Colf Trickster Rift in Sylvania and then one anywhere we want. And then the Bloodsucker's Bane immune to vampiric attrition for all armies. That is awesome. So we want to move towards Altdor first and then directly pivot to going after Sylvania. That we can do. Oh yes, we can, while we're here, an accidental button press where we can take a look at what I have set for our uh, game settings for anyone who wants to copy. We're just, we are curious. We still do drop a few frames here and there, but this is, this is the setup that I run for just about all of our campaigns. And back to it. For our first battle here, we've got good old helpless needling. Indeed, so they've got three swordsmen led by Siegfried. The soon to be warped three spearmen and a group of crossbows. Well, we can just set our blue horrors to annihilating the crossbows. And then everything else falls to magic. This should be incredibly brutal. On to the fall of Needling. Alright, time to bathe the Empire in purple and pink flames. So for our units here, we'll go ahead and take a look before the battle gets going. We've got the Changeling moving on over towards the enemy lines. This is how he's going to look before he is transformed. He looks awesome. They did an amazing bit of work here on all three of the Shadows of Change models, which makes me quite excited for what's coming with the Thrones of Decay as the Cockatrice takes to the skies. We've got our Iridescent Horror. Going to be our main spellcaster for at least the beginning while we get uh, the Changeling all upgraded up in his uh, transformation skills. We've got the horrifying Flamers of Zinch, which are going to be a, a nightmare for just about all of our enemies as long as we can keep them away from any melee or even missile troops. These guys are quite fragile, but they dish out a ton of damage. We've also got the new Change Bringers that were added in the 4.2 update which are basically just flying, uh, flying flamers. They have a little bit less ammunition and I believe a little bit more damage in kind of the late game because you can get some upgrades on them that they have kind of a vortex style attack, which is insane. We've also got our Furies of Zinch. Keep it cheerful, very expendable, but are going to be excellent at harassing backlines, archers, artillery, all that kind of good stuff. They've got a little bit of a barrier as well, which keeps them safe, at least partially, from kind of any enemy fire. We've got our Zangors hiding over in the woods here, waiting to charge in when the enemy is not paying attention. Those people are a little bit upset that they don't quite look as uh, mutated as they might should. Would like a few tufts of feathers or even a beak here and there. Not every unit needs one, but just a few more mutations would have made them look quite cool. Also, giving them a couple different... Uh, things for their axes, because in their little flavor text, it shows them as having crystal axes, bone axes, all sorts of different things. So just a few different variations on the material itself. I would have gone a really long ways here. They still look great. Got the big blue hateful bird flying on in. Also received a little bit of a change where it now has a activated ability that will slow an enemy down to a stop after a short time. We'll have to see how useful that is compared to the old. And our last units here being the... Lovely blue horrors. You want to treat these mostly like a hybrid javelin style unit where their, their fire is very, very damaging, but doesn't do a lot to armor. And let's get into the action where we've got our flyers moving forward. Since we do have so many of them, we can pretty easily lock down their only, their only archer team and then blast any kind of response to shreds with magic. Kind of hiding the cockatrice in the trees. It will do a little bit to reflect any ammunition that is shot their way. But since the Empire chooses to wait on the hill, we'll come to them. There is a lovely little bit of a choke point here with these rocks, and since they don't have any other archers, we can just kind of funnel them down and annihilate them. Bad day to be in the Empire. For our spells that the Changeling is going to be rocking, we've got Pink Fire, which we're showing off now. 
rips through a couple of the lines. Doesn't get a ton of kills, but it does a lot of damage to their health, and then gives them that warp flame weakness, which is going to result in mass casualties when the Changebringers start unleashing their flames. Their speed is incredible, and each one of those blasts is completely annihilating frontline troops. We got the Furies and Cockatrice dancing around in the crossbow teams. Just meat for the grinder, these poor lads. Take more change, bring your flame blankets across the line. Scorches earth and leaves lads in, in pieces. It's lovely. Get an insane amount of damage. How many kills are they up to? 171 already. Down to six shots, but when each blast does that much damage. Let me check out any of the changelings. Proper attack animations before the other flamethrowers arrive. Bad, bad day to be an Imperial soldier. That is the breaking for the entire army. They were never going to uh, last very long under this kind of assault. You see the very low armor. Uh, the blue horror fire is insanely effective. And of course the flying flamers outright annihilated whole, whole squads by themselves. Xangords we mostly used to just kind of chase off the first unit that decided to break and run so we didn't have to deal with them. So they're still on pursuit duty. They'll catch them eventually. Uh, yes, playing Zinch is like coming on home. The Wizard Guild is back to where it belongs. We lost zero in that fighting because there's absolutely no way you should. Uh, they were blended apart by Warping Flame. 306 kills going to the uh, Changebringers. Those, I'm guessing, are going to be our MVPs for most of the battle here. So our first settlement has been captured and we can choose to either go for a Symbiotic or Parasitic Trickster Cult. I think here early on, I'm going to go for a symbiotic one. Exactly. And now that we've infiltrated a settlement in the Empire Theater, we now have the shroud lifted on the entire theater and can see everywhere in the Empire all at once. Great to be Zeech. We also got a trickster cultist here at Changeling, Leopold Schreiber. Is he one we can use in battle? No, he is actually one for establishing cults. I see. You can sell it for the changeling. A change is inevitable. It is foolish to fight it. Raise the conspirators' knowledge and grow strong. Less seduction units budget for Slanashi armies and more Zichi interruption. From my research, it seems it is going to be best for us to be putting the parasitic cults in places that aren't going to be making as much gold, and the symbiotic ones in things like Telemheim, any of the provincial capitals or uh, dark uh, fortresses that we are able to bully. Those are going to be the places that we want to put in the symbiotic ones, whereas kind of a lot of the Norskin settlements and most of the Oblasts in Kislev, we're going to want to avoid uh, putting the uh, at least the symbiotic ones. Also, use your trickster cultist to establish a cult in any settlement. I think the best one's going to be down in... all the way down in Drakenhof here. They've got a gold mine, among other things. We need to raise Jinji and corruption there anyway. Leopold, your first mission is to infect Drakenhof. We'll have you establish a symbiotic cult there. Indeed. So actually, we do start with a cult over in Flinsburg, which has a slither of potential for Blue Horrors and Chaos Furies. We could upgrade to go for those Pink Horrors pretty quickly on. I think it's a very good idea. Also has a hidden storehouse, which is going to be draining 300 income, or just generating 300 income, as well as some Zinchian corruption, and then draining 30% of the income from the building in that local region. Maybe not draining, but stopping them from making the money. If it was to be a NCA, we would gain income from their settlement, and their settlement would actually gain more income as well. Why are we starting off with something that's going to give us this much extra discoverability, then? We'll leave it at for now. Cult Conspiracy would give us more 
while he's Grimora's control and less discoverability. Or I'm guessing more generated, but less control, more discoverability. Bird box would have a chance to expand the Trickster Cult to an adjacent region. Do the Enforcers of Boda as well, but it costs a bit more. All sorts of interesting stuff here. Relations with Warriors of Chaos and Norska. We'll just raise up an army once you finish it. An army of demonic rebels hostile to everyone will arrive through the rift on building completion, and the other one on the other side is. An army loyal to you is summoned. No telling how strong they are, but we can likely increase their power through technologies. Okay, well, we don't have a ton of gold off the start here. Let's just make sure the Changeling has some more troopers. The cult of pain and so whatever you, whatever, I guess, stance you're in at the end of attacking the settlement is what you will be in upon... Uh, I guess upon it. Establishing that cult, so we'll want to keep that in mind. We have a no formless horror yet. When do we gain our first? Upon establishing probably our first uh, trickster cult. Let's see if we've got it in the missions just yet. Establishing that cult will give us our first form, so it's probably going to be a little bit until we actually reach Drakenhof. So since we are going to be able to. Be Losses terror and enemy leadership minus six. Let's go ahead and grab the more movement range for the start and then head up and grab our inspiring presence and then just start moving down his line. I'm you just better. So when transform plus five melee attack, 10% more weapon strength and five more melee defense. So you literally just become them, but better. Cool down for all spells. Granted, they will have their unique spells and stuff that you don't get access to, so it's more or less just kind of evening the odds. We could grab some ogre bulls here. Which we might. Together, what a phantasmagoria we make. You'd go one more fury and then two blue horrors. And then we will go ahead and grab ourselves some ogre bulls here next turn, that way I'm not having to pay for them. Don't know what we're gonna end up calling them, but what's the comments? What are we gonna what's the name? We need a good thematic name for these ogre bulls that have been Hired by the Changeling. We also need to figure out what we're building in here. I think we definitely want to upgrade our military potential with the Flicker of. But then again, we can't afford those units. So let's go ahead and find another money-making building. Raider's Bounty is going to increase. Discoverability. So let's actually pop in and grab a Disguise Trade. Making only 20 gold from here. That's not great. Raider's Bounty it is. And then we could also upgrade our Flicker of Potential. Maybe even an Enforcer's Abode in one of the others. We'd have to pay for that, though. I would definitely like the passive ability to kind of spread those around. We might just up one of those abodes in Drakenhof once we have the Symbiotic Cult in there. So in that case... Agent's Hollow or... Yeah, let's go for an Agent's Hollow to kind of decrease the overall discoverability we have in this area. And also generate a couple more Cult Supplies and Grimoires. Alright. A quick look at our diplomacy before we end our first turn here. Clan Creepus. It's likely a good idea to kind of stay off of everyone's radar for the time being. And as soon as we want to fight someone... We will then play the part of mercenary and offer to join their war for whatever in return. But we aren't going to really worry about our reliability at all. It is going to be whatever suits us at that point in time. We get there. That'll be our first turn. The Black Venom Tribe bites the dust. Up the way the Trickster has been researched, so we've got a little bit more replenishment rate. We do also have... Umbral Stoneheart now raiding in our territory. Fool. So we can pop on in and find our next, or figure out our next technology. Some of these are going to cause grimoires. We've got Arcane Surge, cooldown reduction for Zeech and Metal spells, spell resistance and miscast base chance. 
and more wins with magic. Let's get the mastery of scheming for more experience gained by 50%. That's pretty intense. Changing of the ways, track army. These are all the changing of the ways. So we'll, we'll ignore this for now. And just grab the mastery of scheming first here for that passive experience gain. And huge bump to how much we're gaining every battle. The means to my schemes. <laughs> Indeed. And so, Madarab the Orb Keeper. Oh, Madarab, you are going to be our Kevin. Kevin the Orb Keeper. Do you have a specific ability for being the Orb Keeper? No, you're just... He's very confident. Uh, we could stimulate growth, which I don't think we need to worry about at all. Replenish troops or go for just a better Searing Doom. It is going to be the call. So you have the Orb of Zinch. I actually love that you start with your own unique uh, unique item there. It just drops the Winds of Magic cost for lore of Metal Spells by one. This small orb seems to find its way back to its owner, no matter what they do with it. It does at least provide some spellcasting benefits. You can just chuck it at someone at Mach 4 and let it come back. There's all sorts of things you can do with that. And then for the changing, we've got the Scepter of Stability. I've had some lads uh, request that we go over our items a little bit more often, so I absolutely can. Uh, St uh, Scepter of Stability is a activated ward save for spell resistance. It gives you 40% for whoever you want every, it looks like, 60 seconds, so... Pretty good little item there when fighting anyone with spells. Who shall I be today? Let's grab ourselves some ogre bulls. Join me for some shot we'll likely kick them out at some point, but we're gonna have Schadenfreude, huh? I'm here for some Schadenfreude. Let's check if anyone's at war with the Ungrel. Only, only those that we are already fighting. Intriguing. Are we able to join war with someone that we're already? No. I think we might be able to be quite and sneaky there, but nope. Instead, we just smash right into the Cheeto tribe. Bok Bok. Show you Bok Bok. He's got two Gore Herd, three Ungore, a couple Spears, and some Archers. The Archers are probably going to be the most dangerous unit he has here, so we're going to definitely want to utilize our Cockatrice, our Ogre Bulls, and our Furies to disrupt them while everyone else gets ripping through the Gore Herd. We can definitely take up some high ground here in this little mountain pass, and we absolutely shall, so onward to slaughter. And the Ogre Bulls demanded we pull over for some snacks, and here we are to hunt down the, uh, the good old Cheeto Beastmen. So most of their army is completely invisible at the moment, we'll kind of pull out and see exactly what they are rocking with. They've got some lovely dusted Ungor herd with the spears and the axes all across the front line, and then the back line consisting of the very stocky Ungol raiders, so we won't really see them until they start launching their arrows our way. And they've got this quite metal-looking beast lord. The models all do look great. Even on ones as old as the beast lords. So back on over where the air force is moving on in. plan with them was mostly to kind of suss out the enemy archers, figure out where they're hiding, we can unleash havoc with the change bringers. I've got the flamethrowers moving up with the blue horrors since they are actually able to blast over the heads of their allies in a pinch. And they've got our sneaky Zangors moving up the side, also to kind of disrupt any kind of archer and nonsense they might be trying. All of our spellcasters are going to be completely capable of defending themselves, even if they're quite squishy. As all of their spells, we could, or if anyone gets surrounded, we can just kind of have Kevin the Orb Keeper move in and destroy them. Blue fire going out, targeting the beast. We're getting some pretty awesome damage. As the Crocatrice and the Fury teams move in to munch on some archers in the back line. Crocatrices are very tough. We still don't really want them fighting against beast lords for long. Nice bit of damage on the Ungol Raiders to start. They have a 120 units in their uh, regiment, and we were able to delete 15 of them just with a single volley, which is pretty excellent. He's got the changeling moving around trying to find a group of archers to shut down before they eliminate our Furies, which are quite fragile on their, their leadership department, so they, they will start physical away even with pretty full health. You'll notice we have a group of ogres back here in the trees, uh, kind of just having a picnic. Uh, they, spoiler alert, 
may stay there pretty much the entire battle. We'll actually go take a look at them though, because they have some unique color schemes being here on Zinch's horse. So this is what your ogre bulls will look like if they are fighting on the side of the changer. Ah, uh, but these guys are, they're a bit confused. They wanted to pull over for some snacks and they're not being utilized even a little bit. Such is the way. Uh, I am a general with quite poor eyesight, so if they're they're off my radar even a little bit, they usually get left. There are some key bindings I can use to defend to help that, so we'll see if I can't learn that along the way here. We can select all of our idle units and send them in, so that's what I'm going to try to work on. Changebringers absolutely annihilating the Ungols. I've got the Furies dancing in and out of danger there. The Ungol Spearmen, while are able to get a couple good pokes in, aren't nearly scary enough to uh, actually scare off a group of Chaos Furies of Zinch. A little bit of bigger Scarecrow for them. How many kills are our Changebringers up to? 109. Changeling himself is up to 15, our Furies are 46 and 57, which is not bad at all. Kevin's up to 42 in climbing, and then our Cockatrice, not doing great for now. The different blue horror squads are doing just fine, because anything that does close that gap is having a horrible day. Now our Zangors are making on in. Teaching their weaker gore brethren who the boss is. with a little bit of blue fire for help. It's a bad day anytime you fight Zinch. That is just facts. There's gonna be flames, magic, and all sorts of horrible nonsense flying about. There's gonna be no archer teams moving in to reinforce, and from here our change bringers can just pick targets at will. We should have retargeted them onto one of the more complete groups of Ungor Spearmen a little bit faster, but even without the break is out and uh, the mass route secures us the win. Although we can to run down to the rest of these poor unfortunate Ungor for Zeech. And the Redhorn tribe gets bodied. Our ogres even slay and gain some kills, even though it was just from running lads down at the very end. That would have been probably even faster had I remembered our mercenaries. Uh, we will go ahead and grab the replenishment. You shall be my army's rations. Indeed. This will also give us an additional battle here. I believe there was a scheme to win a certain number of fights on just the field. Yep, win 15 land battles at the Empire Theater. But I didn't quite run everyone down there, so we get a secondary land battle just from leaving Exu the World Eater alive. We will take the additional point and a plop Zeus into Inspiring Presence. And then, good old Orb Keeper, I am going to give the secondary point into Searing Doom. Such a good spell, we want it to be as cheap as possible. Go ahead and finish off the World Eater. Come on, Auto Resolve. Be kind. These guys are mostly slain. All we'd have to do is look at them sideways and they'd run for the hills. That's the way. 13 lost. And we can go ahead and offer these up to Zinch's tribute. Today I choose favor. <laughs> Voice lines are incredible. The Changeling. And then for Papa Changeling, we got Server Die. Arch Manipulator. Spoilers is going to be pretty useful. And then just good old Corruption. Let's start with Horrifying Revelation. Horror causes terror and then a less leadership for all in the region. Help us win those battles that much faster, especially against the likes of the undead. We are now those stuck in Work Bad and they know where we're at. Perhaps we can drop into an ambush stance and sneak up on them. Don't know that we're going to be able to actually get back into needling this turn here. But we can. The, the borders are just kind of strange. Well, let's waddle on back and gain a couple more troopers. Can't quite get the pink horrors, but we can just get a few more blues. They are perfectly fine. Tempted to go for an additional fury as well, because of how good they are at shutting down uh, either pistol ears or... Crossbowmen, so we're gonna grab one more flying unit. Even though they are a little bit expensive. 
We'll need to hold off on just about everything else, but... Yeah. Let's zoom on in here, and then we'll give that turn over to our opponents. Melted down. I guess that's one of the things that that's reason that Corn despises him. One of the only people who've been able to sneak into his throne world. Or throne throne world, throne room. Wrong franchise. Symbiotic trickster cult here in Drakenhof. He melted it down into a diorama of his defeats. Oh, we've got Kairos Fate Weaver. I mean, not the best melee form we could have gained, but now we can become all of Zinchu's champions. His demonic ones, that is. Sure. And Drakenhof has a lovely trickster cult. Leopold sacrificing himself in the process when we gain. Mercantile illusion for 100% of settlement's income. 750 is nice. And then also the Parliament of Lies. So we'll get diplomatic relations boost with Sylvania. And then more winds of magic in this area. Not too good to me. You can also pop on in here and... I want to slot in the Enforcer's Abode. It'll cost 100. But it's it's double what the other one is. 2% or 4%. And that's going to be what we're going for. Then we come back over to the Changeling. Maybe we can assault Fort Bad. Let's see if there's anyone here. Nope. So we will then dress as Kairos for the next fight. Oh, we do get all of his abilities. So, Oracle of Eternity, Gaze of Fate, Scroll of Destiny, and then a good deal of his spells. I don't think we get all of this off the start. This is going to be some things we unlock through our own skill tree, so we'll, we'll find out here in this next battle. Changeling versus Wurtbad. Let it begin. And these big boys can actually break down walls themselves, so we'll use them as a battering ram. A valiant defeat. Crossbows and spears. All right, well, let's put faith, steel, and gunpowder to the test once more. We need no siege equipment. We have ogres. Stop, nice and tight. Bunched up, nice and tight. Welcome to our first siege, where we are going to play things a little bit sneakily, where I have all of my visible units all over on this side. One kind of unit of blue horrors ready to be expendable, or just kind of sit here and, and laugh at the enemy while they set up their entire defensive unit on this side of the field. Meanwhile, our lads break from the forest, where we have now transformed the Changeling into Kairos, where you can see he actually is going to retain none of his spells, so we're going to have to move a little bit further down our skill line before we're going to get any of Kairos Fate Weaver's actual abilities. But at current, he is now transformed into Kairos himself with all of his stats and skills, minus the ones that we don't have yet. Of our iridescent move on in, and then the ogres are going to get to work beating down the gates. We're going to try out how effective they are at getting through those walls. Got plates out, boys. All of our blue horrors and our zangors on this side as well, and then we will move the flamers of zinc. They were on the other side since they are not actually able to hide in any amount of trees, so we had no real choice there. Our air force screams across the skies, looking for any towers to rip apart or isolated crossbow teams like we have found here in this back line here. Foolish Imperial crossbows. I think they were deploying them to defend this back key plaza, but since we are more here to annihilate their units than anything else, I think it's going to go very poorly for them. Descend from the skies, my pitties. And the barrier probably defending against that first volley no matter what. We have to wait for the charge of the swordsman as the other furies go to the back line. And stop any kind of nonsense from happening back there. The cockatrice has landed as well, and I believe I've decided to deploy the petrifying gaze ability, so these swordsmen will slow to a full halt over time. With Kairos and the rest of the uh, aerial units moving that way, there's not a bunch that the Imperials are going to be able to do. Got Zangors and the Iridescent Horror moving to chew on the gates because I figured we could use Ogre Bulls to go up to the walls. They should be able to get through that a little bit faster. 
health is exactly the same, so I kind of wanted to test either way. With the backline being absolutely annihilated, we send the change bringers in for a bit of a duel with crossbows. For science, I wanted to see just how well they handle themselves in a proper missile duel. Which, Zinch willing, that was an horrifying first volley. Second one goes down, I don't think the lad's going to be willing to fight at all. Change bringers get through that without taking a single bit of damage. Which means now on to the final crossbow team and the last hope that this army has for defeating us. Hecarus dances his way through the poor unfortunate souls. Nightmare Incarnate. They do have a couple of towers gone up now, and these are the distinct faction tower towers. They look That's why they look quite a bit better than the normal, even if there's a little bit of clipping. They look quite a bit better than the normal kind of ramshackle rock and timber towers you have normally. A little bit of return fire coming on in for us now, but it's not really doing that much to our barrier. We can stay here and bully these poor crossbows all day. And as we are able to upgrade more and more on the barrier hit points for our armies at large, uh, those change are going to be able to stay in against some even more elite archers, which would be even awesome. No words, but awesome. Flying chicken nuggets descend. And we uh, will deploy our cockatrice as well, but not into a group of halberdiers. I'm going to mute for a quick moment because we've got jets doing a laps over our apartment. One moment. Alright, I'm going to try to talk over him the best I can. I'm not going to stay gone for that long. We did leave our uh, Furies uh, off the walls for a bit longer than I would have normally because I was trying to test how fast it would take our lads to get through these walls. It has taken so long that it would have been just better to send the Furies up and over and open the gates for us since there were no Imperials on the side. We'll have to keep that in mind for our next couple battles. Furies, though, are insanely good at tearing apart enemy towers as they have just annihilated both of those in our way. Cockatrice is in a little bit of trouble here as it's bogged down in Swordsmen and Halberdiers. And a group of spearmen have also joined the fray, so ready to try to use our chain bringers to scare those guys off quite fast. Hyros is over here bullying some more crossbowmen. Stop as you might as well. Have managed to disengage the cockatrice. It does have quite a bit of mass, so it is able to pull away from blob fights pretty effectively. Fury is kind of swooping down and dealing with the more wounded units. It is now up to our blue horrors to rain flames down upon the, the last vestiges of this Imperial Defense Force. A couple of units that are all the way across the field here aren't going to be able to do much good. The Halberd Deer team is the town captain. With them now focusing on our cockatrice, we can land any of our other units behind them that we want. In fact, the changeling is back and using his magic now, finally. Blue fire went a little bit awry, but we've sent now even the change bringers in. Not typically what you want to do, but they do have some awesome attack animations. And like that, though, the Imperials break. There's only one final group of Albadiers left, and they are beating Sigmar the hard way. In charge our bulls, which are going to get a lovely little dose of flames themselves. Already ready to, to uh, shatter. Oh, they've gained their leadership a bit, which means they're going to do some bite into these ogres. And hopefully we don't lose a single model. Now we might. Good old flamethrowers. 
We'll pull the ogres away. We'll chase down the surviving yet cowardly Imperial troops. And that'll be that. And that siege went hilariously well for us. Nine of our own fell, and that was mostly just because of a uh, bad micro. We probably could have sent our blue horrors up and over the walls a little bit faster, but I wanted to see how uh, quick the ogre bulls and our normal Zangors can get through those gates, which is incredibly slowly. Next time, Glass will get to the ladders and get up and over. Uh, we will immediately come on in and symbiotic trickster cult weren't bad. And now we can get the sour guts. You beings are equally as dangerous in death as they are in life. These guys explode uh, upon their demise. It is the same as the... Well, I can't think of the name right now, but there is a, a blessing for Mother Astonkia that will cause your units to blow up when slain. Alright, we start off with the Disguised Trade, which we'll have to build up over time as they recover from being destroyed. The change Master Schemer. Diplomatic Relations plus 30. With all factions, you always make time for the shape of a friend. Hey. So yeah, we, we realized there that Kairos had none of his spells whatsoever, so it's just melee Kairos, which is a pretty meh melee fighter, but he can fly around, which is pretty useful. Uh, so we'll come on in then and grab... I actually think we want to make... I really want to make our troops stronger, but... Ooh, Red Hot Jeep. The curtain falls, the victim is left stupefied as the changeling pulls back to savor his spoils. Access to the assumed form's battle abilities when using formless horror and then a 100% chance to steal an item? Well, don't mind if I do. Since Kairos has no spells just yet, let's go for I'm you just better for more strength and melee attack and defense. Then we'll allow Kevin to be our spellcaster for now. Uh, Searing Doom is perfectly fine. Let's grab Replenish Troops, then we'll move down that line. Beautiful stuff. No new ancillaries for us, though. Should change pretty soon as we're going to start just beating the ancillaries out of our enemies. Exactly. So we can start adding in Pink Horrors, which I am going to start doing right away here. So we'll grab just... Can only afford the two. That'll work. Thought about kicking out our blues, but there's no real reason to. All right, we just don't get to do any actual building upgrades this turn. I think it's fine by me. We need to figure out what buildings we can plop in over here at Drakenhof to help out with that siege corruption too. It's not increasing at the moment. That's likely just because we don't have enough abodes. No parasitic buildings, which are going to cause lots of extra corruption. Alright then, that shall be on next turn. This win is Bloody Spears are now consigned to Oblivion as well. That when Albrecht is here. Hard. Where do we think he's going to move to next? I'd like to try to come on in and... Uh, take Albrecht down, but if we, we hit work bad again, the only options will be to raise the settlement, which would be kind of dumb here. So let's start moving back towards Altbur uh, Altdorf is this way. We can go down towards Averheim, but that's kind of going out of our way. Let's switch over into Ambush. Will enjoy my surprise. If we can actually manage to surprise them. Now let's see if we can't increase the corruption down here in Drakenhof. See, corruption plus three. You think that's more corruption, but less? I wouldn't mind the limb breakers layer. There we are. No real discoverability here, so we should we should be good to go. It'll start increasing as we grab in the enforcer's abode and the other, but that is fine. See if we get ourselves a lovely ambush. Changing the ways to start spreading more Zinchian corruption may not be a bad idea either. How much is in the area? Not likely. Only 23. It's kind of stalled out. Deceive. Let's go ahead and uh, how often can we do this? Be the best way to find out, wouldn't it? Oh, just five turns? That's no problem at all. This will also give us a little bit more ammunition in the area too, so Zinch Corruption for Zinch Factions gives us more control for our buildings, which we don't care about. 
uh, more winds of magic, and then a lot more ammunition, which is great. Especially because our chain breakers here have pretty low ammunition normally. They end, so we got two additional shots, which each shot has been blending apart anything that it manages to hit, so I am here for it. MVP, change breakers. What's next? More factions keep biting the dust. And now our corruption is up to 48, so we've got 25% more ammo and then 15% more uh, winds of magic increasing when it is changing. So we're up to almost max magic already. We didn't get an ambush. They're just gonna set up in there. Their settlements. Unfortunate, but can't be helped. We are gonna move on and hit Imperbad then, because it is next along our line when you want to keep building up skill points. Do not waste no one's at war with Talibheim. That's fine. We can be at war with Talibheim. Edelmut, prepare thine cheeks. Not likely. Oh, Not likely. Fun That's have. fair. Changer's fire is much like the Spanish Inquisition. Malice drives me. Malice drives me. We shall then move in on Kimberbad. I guess this is going to be an easy win, isn't it? There's nothing really here. We'll give this one the auto resolve. Lose so tricks. many ogre bulls. I think we're going to kick those guys out. They tend to fare very poorly at auto resolve. Uh, here in Kimperbad, let's go for a parasitic cult. Since there's no, no trade resources here, and it's a minor settlement. Yoink the, the what we need away from them. With an additional... Court of Whispers, what is that going to give us? Diplomatic relations with Talibheim? Nah, we'll just make some money. Good old Raider's Bounty. Old established, and we are now back in Fort Bad, so no one should know where we're at. I am everyone. Let's grab Fool the Wind, which will hopefully be extra great once we grab all of Kairos' abilities. Replenish troops, and then we'll probably go for Plague of Rust to rip off the Holy armor at our enemies. Scheming. Blue Horrors don't exactly have any armor piercing, but their damage is, is quite high, so enemies with low health will be blended apart. I'll ignore that. You'll ignore that, will you? You're in work bad. I wouldn't mind yoinking away a few more goodies. Agents Hollow 4, Grimoires, and Cult Supplies. That'll do. Unpredictable. Unforeseen. Unholy. And as soon as we do sack Altdorf, we should go immediately then after the Fecundites. Hopefully we can just kind of Massively build up Zinch Corruption down here in Drakenhof. Doesn't look like it's happening just yet. Negative five and plus one. So as we build up this Limbreaker's layer, that should start building it up quite slowly. All right then, back to the Changeling and our turn. Moon Howlers now also fall. Greenskins factions being wiped out left and right. Demons and mortals alike become more skilled as they enact the Changeling's ever-devious schemes. Indeed. Let's go ahead and move now uh, to Grunberg. It looks like everyone here and these factions is going to sit and do nothing for the time being, so we can head on out and keep doing some damage. Who all's at war with you there, Reichland? Servant of you are not welcome in my court. Uh, the word of the one eye is going to be quite broke. Have we met? These beastmen. We have indeed. I will join your war against Reichland, and you will give me a very paltry sum. Come to the Herdstone, we drink. Not this time. I don't know what you're drinking, but it's likely Paint Stripper Squared. And we then move on Grunberg. We're going to continue to leave the ROR unit out for now because I don't want to pay their upkeep. And we don't haven't run into anything quite dangerous enough to need it yet either. Another auto resolve for us because Otto has no forces. Is the Elector Count of Nordland though? He's a raidy boy. My cantrips and capes. Seventy-four lost. We'll have a proper battle here pretty soon, hopefully. We will slot in the symbiotic trickster cult here because it does have a resource building. Scourge of Mankind, all of this fighting humans, 
Men are little more than base animals in sore need of culling. More leadership when fighting against humans for all of our demons. Those abilities are much, much better for all your demon and undead factions that will fizzle away if not properly managed. The deceiving Alright, Kevin. We will give you now metal shifting on to Plague of Rust. I am change. Indeed. So now that we have gone uh, gotten our mastery of scheming, we have unit boons we can unlock now, so six turns give us 25%. Oh, that's just weapon strength. I thought that was missile. That'd be insane. And more armor. Spell resistance for the big boys. Recruit rate for Doom Knights. Arcane Mirth. We get power recharge for all of our blue and pink whores. This is pretty strong. Piercing screams, charmed attacks for screamers, and extra defense for cockatrice. What does the Warhost in Waiting give us? More allegiance points. Are we able to get even more experience gain? Ooh, we can. Champions of change. Well, that might be the call then. Let's go Warhost and Waiting to unlock our army boons as well and see what we can... 100% reduction in wins and magic costs for teleport. We'll be getting ambushes left and right then. There's some great ones over here. The means to my schemes. Indeed. We'll swing on back over to Drakenhof and see what we need to build up for the Marauder's Den. 20 cold supplies will have that next turn, no problem. So we can spend some gold this turn. How much how much will it be though? 2,000. We can spend some gold, but not too much. Let's go for an additional... Oh, we're not in friendly territory, so not, not this turn, then. Could grab these guys, but I think we're going to keep holding off for now. There we go. I know we've got several buildings available. What we're going to do is try to build up that Zinch Corruption here in Drakenhof first. So you get a nice zero, discover, negative 30 discoverability. And onward, Daltdorf. Unpredictable. So serious. <laughs> Relax. I have no reason to hold back. No, there is there's no holding back for this voice actor. Excellent uh, excellently done, sir. Bray heard strong in many things. Speech is not one of them. You're very similar to me in speech. Auckland now also bites the dust, which means Festus is out doing all sorts of nasty things. And Creepus is gone, and Skull Smashers as well. Death all over the place here. Well, do we want to take a slight detour and take down Nuln? Well, I would like to, let's be clever. We can teleport across all the way next to Altdorf, but I think we'll just switch over into an ambush. Spider to the fly. Sneak our way in between. One day. There's the Emperor. Do not take me for a fool. We'll find out, won't we? You have a full stack and I don't. I'm not scared even a little bit. We'll come on back over here then and grab the Marauder's Den, or should we grab the Torturer's Shack? Pay a little bit more per turn. It's going to outright double the chance to expand the Trickster Cult, which would be great for uh, increasing Zinch Corruption here by... I proxy. Let's go Marauder's Den to keep building up those supplies, and then we'll switch over to expanding the cults. I know not why the others hate my tricks. While you're here, we're gonna go ahead and grab these sour guts, just in case Franz has something a little bit a little bit too spicy for us. Beautiful stuff. My tricks don't have to result in terrible years. So much fun when they do. Ooh, the enemy failed to spot our ambush. Franz, you fool. I mean, he has some scary units here. He's got two units of handgunners. We're going to want to make sure they are shut down at all costs. Uh, but his front line is fairly weak and easily blended up with magic. His great swords are going to be something we target with our change bringers. And then the archers have very, very low missile strength, which we should be able to shrug off, at least with the initial wave of our blue horrors. Reichsguard are going to be scary. So we'll likely want to have our ogres... 
fighting them as a sacrificial lamb. We shall find out. We still have our ambush, so we can take exactly where we want to go. Amazing. One more battle here for this first episode of Franz versus the Changeling. And now we learn how best to slay a fledgling emperor. I'll actually slow things down a bit because it will get quite dangerous quite fast. The flames bathing first the mortar teams, then our enemy Reich's guard as they are the most important targets for us. I haven't given any orders on the back line because it'll just m m make them uh, actually rotate instead of firing on what we want to. Or Karl Franz has deployed in a bit of a line formation. So at the start, they're going to be hauling towards uh, just the uh, withdrawal location before anything else. They will recalculate and then come after us, but the initial instinct is to go for the retreat. Mortar teams are already annihilated. We have blue horrors up front to take any charges from those Reichsguard or, or soldiers. That way the pinks that are much more useful can retain all of their health. Reichsguard don't even get an initial charge. Clean for the hills. Handgun teams also having a horrible day as metal spells rip apart their melee front line. And Franz is still running for the exit. Just leaving his loyal Imperial soldiers to be bathed in flame. Making sure we're still targeting the most important units, those being those hand gunners. If they get a single volley in, they're going to be able to tear down a good deal of health on our change bringers or some of the other units. Reich's guards start to charge and then change their mind. They've had just a little bit too bad of a day. Got our cockatrice moving in to try to keep Karl Franz from escaping as more Changebringer flame rips through these Imperial lads. 89 kills, another volley gets them up to 108. Yes, please. A couple good blows landed on Franz, but we're going to want to pull back as he is going to be very dangerous. Especially with his bodyguard of why handers there. They either get a volley in. Quite a bit of damage, but no change bringers have fallen yet. Thank Zenith. Any health a unit like this is going to take in battle, if they, as long as they don't lose one of their uh, models, uh, they will completely replenish up the full at the end of that battle. Metal spells were a little bit ineffective because the Imperial soldiers ran for the hills. I think that looks to be the strategy for the rest of the survivors here. Bronze is going to hold the line against what he perceives as Kairos. Kairos has some pretty excellent combat animations for a caster. A lot of the unit's effectiveness actually comes down to how many or how large that hitbox is on their combat animation and actually how useful it is. There are several units like Carnosaurs and such will have a few animations that just don't hit very many units. You'd think they would. They lose a bit of damage that way. And now that the change breakers have arrived, there's not much the enemies can do, although they're out of ammo already, so we'll have to send in the pink horrors and some of our more ancillary units to win the day. As you can see, the Franz is having no issues dueling with a fake Kairos. And another squad of crossbows and handguns has recovered. We'll send in the ogres to try to run them down, but they get caught as well at a group of spearmen. They'll make short work of your typical Imperial Spear line, but they will actually take a fair bit of damage back just due to that anti-large. Blue Horrors, I like to descend in into melee mode, that way they could completely shut the unit down. As your uh, 
AI is going to almost always have their crossbow teams, whatever their missile troops are, almost always going to be in skirmish mode. You should work when you can to take advantage of that. That's a victory against the Emperor himself. Only a little bit of damage dealt to some of our units there. Things that we can easily heal up over time. And we managed to serve Emperor Karl Franz a pretty a horrifying defeat. Almost zero kills across his entire army, except for the Reichsguard there. We got a lot of friendly fire from our own flamethrower troopers, but once again, the Golden Blade going to the Changebringers, MVP for our campaign. Now, the Ogres, of course, did a very good job of rounding lads up after the battle, but uh, they do fine during it himself, but flamethrowers. We will go ahead then and offer these lads back as Yummy snacks. You shall be my army's rations. Those new man witches, we can move on with renewed vigor. And a new form acquired Karl Franz, and we've actually acquired the Reich's hammer as well, so even great men are flawed. A failure is part of mankind's tragic condition. Until they're possessed by Sigmar. And then we get unit experience gain plus 10% for his whole army, which is fantastic. Arachnorn bites the dust. Now we can move on and in on Altdorf. Invulnerable through change and void wrangler. Those who follow the changeling find themselves particularly mutable. One moment they are themselves, the next they are another. When enough have passed, they can never find themselves again. Some more speed for all of your most heavily warped units, weapon strength, and more barrier as well. That is great. We definitely want a front line of mostly Forsaken then. Forsaken and spawn. When the curtain falls, the red-hot jape is ours. More movement range upon winning a battle. Let's switch on over. I think it is uh, quite poetic to have Altdorf fall to Karl Franz himself. We shall assume his form for battle, even if it's not quite as good as Kairos' for flying around. He's at least got the hold the line ability. Somehow Karl Franz moves on Altdorf. Try to hit Aldebaras outside. That way we can drag everyone outside the settlement to fight. So we can defeat Aldebaras quickly. Wow, you you managed to regain your soldiers very fast here. Alright, Carl. We are scared of you, Zero. The Elector Count of Ostermark, this lad is. So does the AI just have access to all of the Elector Counts right off the bat for, for the Emperor? Either way, that gives this hunter here a lot of pretty good, pretty good buffs. Luckily, these don't pass out to the rest of Franz's army, so we have two Reichsguard to deal with, though. We'll see if we can handle it. Quick cut in at the end as I keep tripping over my words. We will fight this next battle here in the next episode. For now, I'm out of time for today. Thank you all so much for stopping by our very first chapter in our Changeling campaign. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like for the like god and a sub and sub zone. We'll see you all in the next one.